Well, hello and welcome to another chat with one of our former stars. This time, another Sydney FC Championship winner, but one from our Westfield W League team. In fact, our guest was instrumental in our grand final win, scoring two goals, as well as our season in general, with five goals throughout the campaign. Yes, it's one of the stars of our 2019 Westfield W League Championship win, Savannah McCaskill. How are you going, Savannah? Hey, I'm doing good. Uh, it's good to see you again. Yeah, nice to see you too. It looks like it's quite late where you are now. What sort of time is it and whereabouts are you? Yeah, um, it's around nine o'clock here. Um, I'm in Chicago, Illinois, um, getting ready for our uh, Challenge Cup tournament here in the NWSL. That's playing for the Chicago Red Stars, if I'm correct? Yep. And that uh, tournament, I believe, represents the season over there, the, the COVID hit season, yeah? Yeah, it does. Um, so we, as of now, we'll have like a group stage and then from there we'll play a quarterfinal, a semifinal, and a final over the next five weeks, I believe. Um, and then that'll basically be the season for the 2020 season, which is crazy. But yeah, it's the times we live in now. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, what do you, how do you fancy your chances uh, in this tournament and winning the league? Yeah, um, I think we're looking pretty good. Um, the last four or five weeks of training have been really solid. Um, I think we've kind of narrowed down our group and kind of said as much as we can how we want to play um, in a short amount of time. So I think our chances are good. I mean, I think, you know, obviously we haven't played a game since – like as a team since the final of last year. So it's been almost eight or nine months, which is um, a long time. But um, I think everyone's hungry and ready to get back out there. So I think it'll be good. You think you've got a team as good as last year? I know, I believe, one of our former Sydney FC colleagues plays for them, Danny Colaprico as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think so. Um, obviously, you know, Sam um, was an instrumental part for us making a final last year. So we are kind of had to shift some pieces around and kind of figure out how we're going to identify ourselves this year. Um, but I think it'll be good. I think we got some new players and I think the group as a whole is looking pretty sharp. Oh, good stuff. Good luck uh, with that. Hopefully you get the same outcome as you had when you, you came over here for three months to, to play for Sydney FC. Just remind me how it all came about because you were actually at Sky Blue FC I think prior to that which is quite a coincidence. Yeah um, I went from Sky Blue to Sky Blue but um, yeah um, I was finishing up my rookie season for New Jersey and Sophia um, Huerta actually reached out to me and was like hey I'm going me and Danny are going to go play for Sydney FC next season um, would you be interested and I was like actually yeah this is great timing I was coming off a season that wasn't all that great with New Jersey and I just was looking to go play soccer and enjoy my um, playing again so yeah. it came at a great time and I three days later I hopped on a plane and was in Australia um, whirlwind but looking back I'm so glad that I decided to do it. Yeah we are too I mean it was last very last minute stuff I think you told me just before and I seem to remember it as well it was right at the end of the pre-season campaign but fortunately obviously you just come off the season so you arrived what was it three days or something before the start something like that yeah yeah I think I got three or four training sessions in before the first game um so just enough time to try to remember everyone's name uh, <laughs> but yeah it was it was good and uh, did you find the actual training tough at all bearing in mind that you hadn't had much sleep or the time difference and everything <laughs> Yeah, I remember I had gotten off a plane that morning before my first, the first training session with the squad. And uh, I just remember that I got coffee, was just trying to stay awake. Um, and surprisingly, it, it went a lot better than I anticipated. But um, it was, it was definitely, I was still trying to adjust to being in Australia for the first time. And then from there, you know, meeting everyone it was just a kind of a whirlwind of a first two or three days, but um, I believe we got the win in that first game, which was um, just kind of the cherry on top. And then from there, it was a great experience the next four months. Yeah, it was fantastic. Very memorable game, that one, because it was uh, at Marconi Stadium against Western Sydney Wanderers, who were our big rivals and were 
quite well fancied, I think, because um, they'd, they'd actually signed a few of Sydney FC's players from the season before. So um, it was good to go there and get that win. What do you remember specifically about that game as your first in Australia? Yeah, um, I remember that uh, pretty early on in that game, I connected with Kate uh, and then she ended up scoring, which was a great kind of intro for me, um, kind of, you know, find my groove in with the team and kind of set, you know, announce myself into the season. Um, and I just remember uh, because I had, you know, jet lag and dealing with all that, I remember I hit around the 65th minute mark and I was like, oh boy, okay, so now this is hitting me, the jet lag and trying to run for 90 minutes, but luckily at that point, I think it was already 2-0 two, two maybe, uh, yeah. so that was good, it was fun. Yeah, I think Caitlin scored again, or late on anyway, and Chloe Legazzo got a, got a goal as yeah. well. Um, did that guy give you guys confidence? Because I think there were actually some American players playing in the Western Sydney side who had come with good reputations as well. So did that give you guys confidence to, to go on after that? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think, you know, that being the first game that all of us got to play together and we were clicking from the start, which I think was a great sign. So, you know, I think me, between me, Chloe, Kate, um, Soph, Danny, you know, that attacking prowess between, you know, Princess Sabini, um, it was just a solid, you know, force to reckon with. And I think from that first game, it was kind of like, all right, well, this is our starting block. Let's see where we can go with this. And I think those relationships just kind of built throughout the next, you know, the whole season. Yeah, what was the, the team spirit like throughout the season? Because I think, um, uh, I think you've obviously got come from a different scenario in the in the U.S. where the training sessions are at different times over here due to the fact that some of the girls actually uh, have to go to work during the days. Um, how did how did you find that the the bond amongst the the players got greater over that season? Yeah, um, it's definitely a little different for me um, coming from a you know it, this is our job here uh, in the U.S. and in the BSL, so we don't have to worry about all that outside you know, pressures or having to go to work, having to deal with all of that. You know, a lot of them were younger kids and they were having to go to school right after training. So, you know, we would show up at 6 a.m. for training so that they could get their training in before they had to go to school or work or whatever it may be. So that was a little different for me. Um, but I think it was great, you know, the combination of the, the younger players mixed with some of the older players that had been through, you know, everything that you could be through in soccer. Um, so I think, you know, our group just kind of found a way to, you know, put age shoes aside. And we had some huge, you know, instrumental players that were still in school. Um, so, like, you know, age didn't really matter at that point. I think whenever everyone came into the changing room, we were just one team. And I think that was pretty special, especially, you know, everyone came from different backgrounds. We were coming from the U.S. Um, so I think it was a pretty cool group that just kind of bonded throughout the season. Well, obviously, we won that first game against uh, Western Sydney Wanderers, and uh, it was a, that was a great high to, to do that. But uh, the next three games, in fact, uh, we actually got beat. And I know, well, even though we were starting to play some good football, one was off Melbourne City, who were obviously always very strong. Jasmine Spencer scoring a hat-trick. Um, and then we had the home game against, uh, against Melbourne Victory before uh, going down 3-2, before going to Canberra. Uh, and losing 2-0. Was, was there a little point at that stage where you thought that perhaps um, we might not be going too well? Yeah, I think um, that was probably the most frustrating part of the season. Um, you know, we, uh, after that first game against the Wanderers, we had kind of set an expectation that we, we were going to go in and we were going to score goals. I think that's kind of how we thought we were going to play, but at the same time, we were going to play pretty good football. Like, we moved the ball well we had the players to be able to create and I think that kind of got a little bit away from us especially with the victory game I think we got a little out muscled um, and I think it just kind of started to get in our head heads that we weren't scoring goals and we weren't winning games um, but luckily we came out of those three games and I think we started to turn it around um, and we, you know we were able to find the back of the net so it's looking back, it's a lot easier to say that it was all right. But at the time, I mean, obviously, no one wants to lose three games in a row.
Um, so that was definitely a trying part of the season, but I think the girls, you know, kept their heads up and everyone was willing to come into training and keep working. Yeah, we, we, we the game after that, we won 5-1 against uh, Brisbane Raw. Um, Caitlin got a, got a hat-trick. Teresa Polias, I remember, scored a fantastic goal from long distance. And yep. uh, Princess Abini was on target as well. But to beat Brisbane was probably a real statement of intent because they are really, a re usually a really strong team and, and, and always up there when it comes to final series. So again, that, that coming off the, the three defeats, that must have really improved the, the situation somewhat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, whenever you score five goals in a game and the way that that game, you know, played out, we absolutely dominated and it was a fun game to be a part of. And I think that's just kind of, it was a build up frustration. Um, and it is just, we showed it that game that we were still around and we weren't going to get pushed aside. And then in front of a big crowd at Manly United's ground, we defeated Adelaide United 5-2 this time, five goals again. And you got your first first goal for the club. Do you remember much about that game? Yeah, uh, that game was a little crazy. We had a lightning delay at the beginning and yeah. then um, I believe we scored first, but then we let them kind of get a goal back and it went back and forth until I think it was 2-2 two -two, maybe. Yeah, Veronica um, Lasko I think got two for them. Yeah, um, and then we ended up, you know, we kind of put up the our foot on the gas and we scored three more um but then i think it was like five minutes left or something like that the lights went out um nice. to the stadium so <laughs> that was that was a kind of a bizarre night but um yeah that was it was kind of a fun game between you know back and forth and then you know it once it hit 2-2 two -two, we we're like nope this is our game and we came back and scored three goals yeah. Yourself, uh, Sophia and, and Danny all got on the, the score sheet as well. As Princess got too late late on after coming on as a, as a substitute. Did you yeah. feel going to, to Manly with the crowd and, the, and the, the way the lightning and the rain was that it was a, 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 a great atmosphere that particular night? Um, yeah, I mean, the crowd itself was great. Um, we had a ton of people there. Um, I know it was Ali Green's you know, home stadium. And so she was really excited. Um, and so we were just, you know, excited that we had a great crowd. The lightning delay obviously, you know, put us a little bit down, but I think we came out pretty strong and figured it out. So, I mean, yeah, overall, you know, looking back, it was a great night. Yeah, and you, um, you went on to score two more in the regular season against Newcastle. Jets that I believe down was at uh, Cogra Jubilee Stadium where we ended up winning the final. Um, that was a, a, a game which really pushed us back into the, the finals slots and, and got us ready uh, to go into the final part of the season in, in, in good stead. How important were those two goals for you, do you think, coming off into that, uh, that Newcastle Jets game? Yeah, I mean, I think they were huge for me personally, but they were also huge for as a team standpoint. Um, obviously, you know, whenever I can get on the score sheet is always great, but winning is the biggest priority. So I think going there and um, just making a statement, but at the same time, uh, my parents were actually in town. Uh, they had flown in for Christmas and New Year's and then stayed for that game. So. Uh, being able to score with them in the stands was special, uh, which ironically they were also in the stands for the final. So I guess something about that stadium and you know my parents being able to watch turned out to be lucky for me. But um, you know those were two pretty big goals for me, and I think the build up of both of them were good as well. Um, yeah. We're just starting to click playing playing together and, you know, setting each other up, which I think is always great. Was that when you started to feel at your best at that point in the season, having got over the, the differences in the various issues when you first came, the, the, the jet lag, the time differences for training, that sort of thing? Yeah, I think so. And I think, you know, not only myself feeling, you know, back to playing really good football and enjoying myself which is kind of was my goal coming to Australia. I wanted to just, you know, be back to enjoying playing. And I think, you know, as the season went on, I was building these relationships on the field, being able to play with these great players 
and we were connecting, playing really good together, and then you know me being able to get on the score sheet at the same time is always, you know, things were just coming together for me and as, us as a team as well because I think that game put us back into, you know, playoff contention, and so at that point in the season things were definitely on the rise. Yeah, then we went into final series off the back of a of a defeat down in Wollongong, which was a defeat which didn't really matter because it was a dead rubber for us. But we uh, went again to Brisbane, another fantastic performance up there in the semi-final to, to win 2-1 away at Brisbane, which is always a very hard place to go. And obviously they're very strong all of the time. How, how much of a, a boost was that going into the final? Yeah, um, I mean, it was huge. We knew we had to win or our season would be over. So um, we, luckily the way it turned out was that we were able to watch the Perth game um, ahead of our game. So we knew if we won, then we would get a home final, um, which was, you know, obviously the goal. We wanted to bring the game back to Sydney and we wanted to be able to play um, on our field. So I think that was, you know, huge. And so going into Brisbane, we just needed to go in and win. That was the only thought process. That was the only thing in our minds. Um, it didn't really matter how it happened. We just knew that we needed to take the three points and we needed to move on to the final. Um, luckily, we put together another great performance and we were able to get out of there with the W and head on back to the final. Yeah, as you say, it was a home grand final against Perth Glory, who obviously had a, a colleague of yours from last season in the NWSL, Sam Kerr, playing for them. Um, and I think Rachel Hill up front, if I'm right in remembering. Mm -hmm. um, how confident were you going into to that game, bearing in mind that it was at home, but against a, a, a good side like Perth? Yeah, um, I think we knew that we had our work cut out for us. We had lost to them earlier in the season um, at Perth. And so uh, we knew that, I mean, Sam's one of the best strikers in the world. So we knew we had to contain her, but at the same time, they had great talent all over the field, so we had to really bring our game that day. Um, but I think everyone was up to it. I just, you know, going into that day, I think I had a great feeling, and everyone I talked to, you know, we were just all kind of laser focused in, but not too focused to where we were super uptight and worried about it. It was more of a relaxed feeling that everyone was just kind of going about their day, going about their business. But at the same time, as soon as that whistle blew, I think everyone knew that, like, we were there to do a job. And we were there to get, you know, raise the trophy at the end of it. So, I mean, I, every single person that stepped foot on that field that day played their absolute best. And I think that's the best performance we put together all season. So. Yeah, it certainly was. We started off so well. I think we had a very early chance right in the first few minutes. And then uh, Sophia had that worldly strike, um, yep. which I think was probably the one of the goals of the season, if not the goal of the season. And, Absolutely. Uh, then after that, obviously, you came on the scene and, and, and got those two goals. Do you remember how much about how they came about? That one was a header and the other one was just a little low strike inside the box. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember that I had a chance early in the game that I definitely should have put away and I smacked the crossbar. And I think after that, I was like, oh, no, it's going to be one of those days. Uh, but then still hit that great strike. Uh, which kind of, you know, pushed us forward, um, set the momentum for the game. And then Kate played this great early cross in um, that was whipping in behind the back line. And I caught the keeper um, off her line. And so I was able to just nod my header over, um, which turned out to be a great goal. Um, and then the second one, I believe, was coming off of a, a deflection. And I was able to kind of get it right outside the six and then just put it back across the goal and find the back of the net. And then, I mean, Chloe also had another goal of the season contender at the end of that one with a cracker outside the box. So, I mean, yeah, those were great goals uh, for a final and luckily it led for us to leave, lift the trophy afterwards. Yeah, it was such a great game as well because it kind of went back and forth a little bit. Um, after you'd scored your second to make it 3-1, I believe they scored Perth mm -hmm. scored down the other end, but then Chloe put that fantastic shot in the back of the net to, to seal it essentially in the last sort of part of the game. And then coming off the back of that, you were able to lift the trophy 
and uh, and how much relief did it feel on that final whistle? Oh, it was amazing. Um, I remember I, there's like tons of pictures, but I remember that I was had just gotten subbed out like two minutes before or whatever, and so I was just kind of waiting there, couldn't really sit down on the sideline, waiting for the final whistle, and um, as soon as the whistle blew, everyone just kind of ran on the field, and there's a picture of Kate jumping in my arms and then Soph running behind, and it's just like all the emotion just like is right there. You're just so happy, so relieved. Um, it's like one of those feelings that you can't replicate anywhere else. Um, and it just kind of, you have to let it soak in. And I think it took a couple of days afterwards to actually soak in the whole experience. Um, but it was a great feeling for sure. And you, uh, of course, won the player of the match as well. What do you think you were up for it after the two goals? Do you have a feeling? Um, kind of, but... You know, like I said, every single person on our team put together such a great performance. I mean, Alana shut down Sam as best as she could. Um, our midfield was completely solid. You know, their Rachel Hill, you know, they, we were just able to contain their pace and their speed. Um, so, I mean, any person on our team could have won it that day. Uh, I mean, I was just lucky enough to put two in the back of the net and got the the medal for that, but you know, it could have gone to any any person on our team that day. So the good thing about uh, playing at home as well is that uh, you could go out and have a, have a celebration afterwards. The the girls this year were down in Melbourne, so had they won it, they'd have had to have jumped on a flight and uh, and come right. back. Uh, but um, but was that the? I know everybody went out after the game and had a, a celebration. Was that the last time you saw some of the girls? Because you had to get straight back for the NWSL. No, um, I actually went to, I believe, I forgot what what park it was at, but we went to the men's game, the A-League game, right, and yes. walked the trophy around. Um, so that was the last time that I saw the team as a team. Um, but definitely the celebrations afterwards um, were amazing, and just having everyone let loose and enjoy themselves for a night um, was always a great, great experience after a season like that. And then you went back, obviously, to, to play in the NWSL for the Chicago Red Stars. Do you still keep in touch with any of the Sydney FC players? Obviously, you would have come up against a few of them as well during that season who had moved over there. Yeah, um, obviously, I've kept in touch with the majority of them uh, that have played in the, in the NWSL. Uh, I played against a lot of them last year um, that were in the league. So, you know, we keep in touch as much as we can um i have you know we obviously are instagram friends and you know friends on social media and stuff like that so i try to keep up with as much as people as much of them as possible um just because i mean the, like i said the group as a whole were was amazing they're the everyone got along so well it's just a group of really great people to be around and so yeah i've tried to keep up with as many people as i can um even if it's from afar um Definitely try to, you know, keep in touch. Yeah, fantastic. What are your plans now, Savannah? Obviously, you've got the season coming up, uh, albeit a very brief or a shorter one. Um, do you have any sort of long-term plans for, for your football? Any thoughts of coming back to the, the W League at all? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I, you know, we're just kind of still waiting to see what this year is going to look like um, after a Challenge Cup standpoint. And then, obviously what a W League season would look like as well. So I am definitely not saying that I will never come back because it was such a great experience for me. Um, it was what I needed at the time. And I've met, you know, like I said, some of the best people and teammates that I've had have been at Sydney. So um, that for me is definitely an option. Um, at some point, it's just, you know, when would be the right time, I think. Uh, especially, you know, this year, our season being a month um you know who knows you never know but it was definitely one of the, my favorite experiences as a professional footballer um and so yeah i definitely would not say that that was would not be a possibility it definitely would be well certainly if you have i'm assuming you have some national team ambitions with the the united states if if that was to come to fruition in the next couple of years, there's still a chance, or there's a very big chance at the moment, that 
you could come back to Australia as part of a, a World Cup squad because overnight, as we know, the Japanese bid for the tournament in 2023 is uh, pulled out. So it now remains between just two bids, Colombia and Australia and New Zealand for that competition. We find out in the early hours of this Friday morning, how big a competition do you think it could be in, in Australia? And, and would you recommend Australia and New Zealand, obviously, as a place to host a, a Women's World Cup in 2023? Yeah, um, definitely. From my experiences being there, I mean, I've played in some fantastic stadiums. Um, just the people as a whole, I feel like, really get behind um, sports in general, but also, you know, with the Australian team doing as well as they have in the past few years, I think you guys' fan base is starting to grow. And I think that's just even going to continue, um, especially if Australia does get the bid for the World Cup. Um, so I think it could be super, you know, super cool to have it there and super special. And obviously, if you have it, um, you know, Australia is one of those places that people put on their bucket list to go to. So I think that would attract you know, tons of people that are going there as a visitor just to sit in the stands and watch, hopefully watch um, some great soccer. So I think it'd be a great place for the 2023 World Cup. Yeah, it certainly would be fantastic for football over here to, to have that here uh, in 2023, uh, just as it was fantastic for us to, to have you here for that 2018-19 season. And uh, we were delighted that you were able to, to come and help us win the, the title. And uh, we wish you all the best and uh, we'd love to see you back here one day and, and hopefully that's the case. Um, and your mum and dad as well, because they, uh, they were, it was great that they came over for the final to surprise you. I seem to remember. Yeah, they did. They're great. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks very much, Savannah. We uh, will let you get to bed. It's quite late and you've got training tomorrow. So um, thanks again for joining us and... Uh, and best of luck uh, for this season and with the Chicago Red Stars. Yeah, thanks for having me.